Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, the love of our Lord Jesus, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. So today we honour St. Monica, who dedicated herself to the conversion of her son, Augustine, and uh, seems to have you know, lived a life of, of such intensity, such longing that her son also would you know, come to his senses, would experience the wonder of the love that she had known through her life and, and through the example. And so we, we pray for all of those. In some ways, Monica seems to be uh, a saint for her, for her own sake, but also for all of those long-suffering mothers who have to put up with the all of the adventures of their children and so we pray for all those mothers all those parents out there who continue to long that their children might experience the wonder and the joy of knowing jesus let's begin by acknowledging that we are sinners and praying for pardon and forgiveness lord jesus you came to reconcile us to the father and to one another lord have mercy you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us with the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who console the sorrowful and who mercifully accept the motherly tears of St. Monica for the conversion of her son Augustine, Grant us, through the intercession of them both, that we may bitterly regret our sins and find the grace of your pardon. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers, we urge you and appeal to you in the Lord Jesus to make more and more progress in the kind of life that you're meant to live. The life that God wants, as you've learned from us, and as you are already living. You have not forgotten the instructions we gave you and the authority of the Lord Jesus. What God wants is for, for you all to be holy. He wants you to keep away from fornication, and each one of you to know how to use the body that belongs to him in a way that is holy and honourable, not giving way to selfish lust like the pagans who do not know God. He wants nobody at all ever to sin by taking advantage of a brother in these matters. The Lord always punishes sins of that sort. As, you, as we told you before and assured you, we have been called by God to be holy, not to be immoral, in other words, anyone who objects is not objecting to a human authority, but to God, who gives you his Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let the just rejoice in the Lord. Let the just rejoice in the Lord. The Lord is King, let earth rejoice. The many coastlands be glad, cloud and darkness are his reign. His throne, justice and right. Let, Let the, the just Lord. rejoice in the Lord. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord of all the earth. The skies proclaim his justice. All people see his glory. Let, Let the, the just rejoice in the Lord. The Lord loves those who hate evil. He guards the souls of his saints. He sets them free from the wicked. Let the just rejoice in the Lord. Light shines forth for the just, and joy for the upright of heart. Rejoice, you just, in the Lord. Give glory to his holy name. Let the just rejoice in the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Be watchful, pray constantly that you may be worthy to stand before the Son of Man. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, The kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five of them were sensible. The foolish ones did take their lamps, but they brought no oil, whereas the sensible ones took flasks of oil as well as their lamps. The bridegroom was late, and they all grew drowsy and fell asleep. But at midnight there was a cry, The bridegroom is here, go out and meet him. At this, all these bridesmaids woke up and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish ones said to the sensible ones, Give us some of your oil, our lamps are going out. But they replied, There may not be enough for us and for you. You had better go to those who sell it and buy some for yourselves. They had gone off to buy it when the bridegroom arrived. Those who were ready went in with him to the wedding hall, and the door was closed. The other bridesmaids arrived later. Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, I tell you solemnly, I do not know you. So stay awake, because you do not know either the day or the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, the Lord Jesus Christ. This is often the case in the letters of Paul after he has concluded his greetings and his exhortations to the church as he's situated the, the context of, of what he's wanting to, to share with that particular community in the bigger picture of, of life with God. He often hones in on particular issues that he's heard about, that he knows uh, uh, issues within that local community. And so it seems that Timothy, perhaps, when he's made his report about the, the church and what's been going on, has told him that there are, there are these moral questions that need to be addressed. And so Paul situates all of this, again, in the context of our essential call to holiness. God wants us to be covenant partners with him. He wants us to be set apart, which is the, the context of what holiness is all about. Not to be contaminated and defiled by all of the attitudes and the situations within our contemporary society. At that time, Greek culture and Roman culture was certainly uh, very loose in its understanding. The, the morality was not very good for promoting the dignity of each human person. And that's what Paul is ultimately about, just as Jesus was about the same, wanting to bring us to holiness and to wholeness, to have that sense of being complete before God and being defiled by all those other uh, events or activities isn't a way of, of keeping us within that ability to be honorable, to be whole, to have that integrity of life. It's that call that continues to be there, to be ready, to be watchful, to, to note, not with uh, an intense sense of anxiety or being overwhelmed by things, but just in simplicity, to make good choices at each moment in our lives, to be able to, to come before the Lord within our own sense and just to say, look, there are two choices that I can make, and there's always at least two choices in any given situation. One will be about wholeness, one will be about life, one will be about integrity, one will be about virtue and goodness, and one often will be very similar, but just a little bit less in participating in those forms of goodness. It'll be more about selfishness, it'll be more about pleasure, it'll be more about what feels good in the moment. The choice for us is always the one that leads to wholeness, the one that leads to life, the one that leads to that integration with the Lord. It involves being ready, it involves being prepared, it involves noting that you know, sometimes there will be, will be those moments when things happen unexpectedly. And it's in those moments that God is inviting us into freedom and into life today. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, 
Through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. Become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. Become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We bring you these sacrificial gifts, O Lord, to commemorate Blessed Saint Monica, humbly entreating that they may bestow on us both pardon and salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The second preface of saints. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in the marvelous confession of your saints, you make your church fruitful with strength ever new, and offer us source, sure signs of your love, and that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled. Their great example lends us courage. Their fervent prayers sustain us in all that we do. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The second. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The third mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Brian, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, we bless Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, with St. Monica and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. May the working of this divine sacrament enlighten and inflame us, Almighty God, on this feast day of St. Monica, that we may be ever fervent with holy desires and abound in good works. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
the Lord be with you. And may the God of all life and goodness, the God of holiness, be with you to bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives.